preserve and save our orcas. And one way to do that is to have every way, every uh, buddy be able to connect with them. So this is uh, one more stop on the whale trail that's being developed. But whales have not been spending time inland this summer. Scientists say it's because there's not enough food here. The governor also toured Cornet Bay, where salmon habitat was recently restored, and a fish passage project at Edgecombe Creek, one of a thousand culverts that needs repairs. The state hopes those projects can restore the dwindling fish and by proxy orca populations. Simone Del Rosario is here. So do you think that these changes are making a difference? So there's two things we know, that recovery takes time and also that these orcas don't have a lot of time to give. Uh, the whales only came inland for two days and just as quickly they left because there's no food. And while we're excited the population has two new calves, those two days I was on the water with the whales, two of the whales were missing. I saw Kiki, J53, both days. Her mom, Princess Angeline, J17, nowhere to be found. And that's very unusual for a daughter to be separated from her mother like that. Scientists also never spotted K25. And those were two whales that we've been concerned about because of their weight. And now scientists say there's a good possibility they're not alive. If we think that uh, every time the number goes up, everything's okay, then next year it goes down, oh, now it's not good. You know, this is, uh, we're just watching the death throes of this population right now. Until we actually restore the river systems, there's not a chance that this population will survive 100 years from now. So the orcas came inland looking for fish returning to Canada's Fraser River near Vancouver. They didn't find any. Returns to the Fraser have been dismal this year, and now there's another problem. Right up that red line, a rock slide upstream. Now, here's what the rock used to look like, that red mark showing where it's coming down. It all came down, the debris now blocking critical salmon habitat. It's likely been blocking the river since late last year. They just discovered it in June. Now British Columbia is looking for a fix to be able to get fish past the blockage in the meantime. One of the methods they're considering is built right here in Seattle. It's a fast moving, high tech, transportable fish passage system that could be used on some of our dams here. It started with apple picking. We were solving a different problem, how to get a piece of fruit from a tree into a bin gently without bruising it. But then another Washington state staple needed help. There's some low hanging fruit out here um, that where we can have a really substantial impact. Whoosh Innovation switched to saving salmon by creating a mechanism they say can quickly and safely pass fish above dams. In many ways, river dams impede fish swimming upstream to spawn and each fish ladder takes one to two days to climb. It's really slippery. It is really yeah. slippery. Whoosh says in its frictionless tube, fish can glide about 25 feet per second, plopping upstream in less than a minute, as opposed to a day. That's after the fish are rapidly sorted. So as the fish comes out of the scanner, it's now just sliding through. This all takes about a second and a half before we have to make a decision. Is it wild, hatchery, invasive? The answers to these questions can better help fish managers. We know this is going to help. The trickier part is how do we get it deployed quickly? Built in Seattle, right now a system sits on a barge on the Columbia River. It's headed for Chief Joseph Dam, the second largest hydropower producing dam in the country. It's a dam without fish passage. Within just a couple of weeks then we can have a system installed where traditional fish ladders may take uh, five six, seven years. The Chief Joseph test is just that, a test. This was all done at uh, our company's cost. No fish will be permanently moved, just yet. But fish managers here and around the world are interested and closely watching. When you have, you know, Mother Orca out here in the telling us all that we are literally dying, the key is, is taking action and taking action when we still have a chance to affect a change. Well, as I said, this is targeted for Chief Joseph Dam here in Washington State to conduct this experiment, but with a real crisis unfolding in Canada right now, there is a chance that it could be rerouted for that. I've been talking to this company for a while now. They say, you know, we want to stay out of the dam debate. Should dams be breached? Should dams not be breached? We know that 
with trying to get off of carbon energy, hydro dams are something that people rely on. Mm -hmm. And they say, regardless of that debate, we want to be here to provide a technology forward solution in the meantime, while those other solutions are discussed. It's an interesting idea. Yeah. At least. All right, we'll Simone. see if it works. Yeah, we'll see if it works. All right, Simone, thanks. All right, turn